Welcome to the Accomplish More podcast created specifically for the small business owner who doesn't think small. I'm your host, Gayla Scrivener. This show is where you'll learn practical ideas, hints, tips, and tricks to help you grow your small business where you can leverage your time and to accomplish more. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Accomplish More podcast. I'm Gayla Scrivener, your host, and I am so glad that you're here with me this week. And, you know, last week I talked about passwords, and this week I'm going to expand on that conversation a little bit more. And we're going to talk about how to share passwords with your virtual assistant. You know, in order to accomplish more and make significant growth impact in your business, you know you'll need to begin forming your perfect team sooner or later. Hiring anyone, whether it's an independent contractor or an employee, you are trusting them to get the job done and achieve the outcomes you desire. If you are having trouble making that leap of trust and haven't hired your first assistant, or maybe you've had a bad experience in delegating in the past, Well, diving into that topic is a whole different show, but whether you're already delegating or haven't started yet, this episode is for you because I'm going to go over five questions you should be asking yourself before sharing your passwords with an assistant. Last week's show, I talked in depth about some best practices in creating more secure passwords and creating a system for organizing them. If you haven't listened to it yet, I recommend you going back and listening to episode number 37, Taming the Chaos of Passwords. Securing passwords is a big thing because we want to protect ourselves. It's not a matter of if we get hacked. It's a matter of when. You know, I don't mean to be pessimistic, but that's just the reality of the world these days. Unfortunately, there are some highly techy people out there with less than honorable intentions to grab our info so they can do with it how they please. We all should be securing our accounts with stronger passwords and being more diligent in our practices. And I went over those in episode 37. Like I said, if you haven't listened to it yet, go back and listen to it. So you're a solopreneur and you have control over all of your stuff. You have a handle on your own passwords, but now you need to delegate. Most of the time, when you bring on an assistant to be your extra set of hands to get the job done, you will inevitably need to be sharing access to some of your accounts. Therefore, you will be giving away passwords. Because all of the cyber crimes out there, I've worked with some people who have been very reserved when it comes to sharing login credentials with anyone. They are so reserved and they are reserved to the point that they hold themselves back in progress because they don't delegate the right things. Some whom I've worked with are way too willy-nilly about sharing account access and I wish they would not give the information so freely. Both scenarios aren't ideal. We all must place trust in those we hire to accomplish the objectives we've set for them. But you can be smart and conservative as to how and what access you grant. You can implement good habits in password sharing and that will help protect you and help protect those you hire. Let's get started by going over five questions you should ask yourself when beginning to share login credentials with an assistant. The very first thing you need to ask yourself is, what is it that you want your assistant to do? Being clear as to the objectives you want your assistant to achieve is important. You will need to provide them with the tools they need to get the job done that you've assigned them. You don't want to be an open book and give your assistant access to all of the accounts you have. No, give them access to only the accounts that will need to get that job done. For example, 
If you have someone doing your email campaigns, you'll need to grant them access to your MailChimp or whatever mail service account you use. But what if they also help you format your blog? Then you'd need them to have access to your WordPress site or whatever blogging platform you've chosen. You may be thinking, nice gala, what a way to state the super obvious. Well, believe it or not, in my experience, I've had folks who wanted to help but objected so much in sharing access that there was no way we could have helped them. Well, believe it or not, in my experience, I've come across some folks who wanted help from me but objected so much in sharing access and that there was no way that we could help. Then I had some folks that literally opened the floodgates to access to their accounts regardless if I needed it or not for the project that I was working on. We virtual assistants really don't want more access than we need to get the job done. It really helps you and anyone you hire to be selective on the access you release. So the second question you should be asking is, what kind of account are you sharing? You have a ton of accounts that you deal with. You need to consider how sensitive the information you are sharing is. For example, sharing login credentials for a social media account versus a bank account is a very different thing. Anything having to do with your money is obviously much more sensitive than managing, let's say, your Twitter account. When you consider how sensitive the information you are sharing really is, you tend to be more selective and cautious of who you share it with. The screening process for having someone manage your social account wouldn't be as rigorous as maybe someone that you'd hire to do your bookkeeping work. You may take a longer time to build trust with someone who will help you stay organized with your money versus helping you schedule your social media posts. I work with a client who hires an on-site receptionist to help answer the phones, make appointments, and a part of her duty is also some bookkeeping. Aside from invoicing customers and preparing a bank deposit, she is also tasked with making sure the registers in their QuickBooks matches up with the bank accounts. To enter the transactions, she needs access to the bank account to see what new transactions have hit the account that may have been missed because, well, mainly a receipt wasn't turned in. There has been turnover in that position, and I highly recommended to my client not giving access to the bank account until they've at least, their new employee has at least gone through their 90-day probationary period. My feeling is that a level of trust should be built, and you need to see if the relationship will work out or not. So how can she do her job completely during her first 90 days? Now, it may be a pain, but well worth the time that I advise my client to log into their bank account themselves and print the information that was needed. It's like printing off an assignment, like a homework assignment, to be completed and turned back into you. It's a good thing to do it in the training time. Yes, you may feel so super busy and feel like you don't have time for that, but that tiny bit of time that you invest and you spend up front doing something like this is well worth it in the long run. After the 90 days and you feel confident, or if in this case, I advise them that after the 90 days and if they feel confident in the skills and how the process was going, then release access to the account with this sensitive information. But for things like your social media account, I see no reason why immediate access can't be granted. The info isn't nearly as sensitive. You can have an assistant create memes for you to post on your Facebook page, and you can post them yourself, but you might as well have them post them for you, and it would save you a ton of time. The third question you should be asking yourself is, can a separate user identification be created? This is very important to consider. 
there are many accounts that within the administrative settings, you can create an extra user account, giving the new user restrictive access. They would have their own login credentials, and you would not be releasing your admin credential information. Now let's go back to my example about granting bank account access. My client's office assistant has passed their 90-day probation period and now needs to be granted bank access so that the business owner doesn't have to take time to print the account transactions. My client isn't handing over their main admin password. No, not at all. Her online banking allows her to create a separate user account and really restrict the things that can be accessed and what can be seen. Now, are you opening yourself up when you give someone else bank access? Yes. Delegating this type of task may not be for everyone. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't do it. I simply want you to be cautious about it and not just hand over your main account number for that. I'm not saying either that the person you hire will do something malicious to you. I don't want you to take the stance of distrusting everyone. Implementing caution and conservative measures for accounts with sensitive information helps protect you and your assistant. Now many accounts, even many non-sensitive accounts, allow you to set up a separate user other than your admin account information. For example, MailChimp, Constant Contact, and WordPress are just three examples where you can easily add a new user. For some accounts, if you want to create an additional user, keep in mind that you may need to purchase an additional license. For example, QuickBooks requires a purchase of an additional license for each separate user. In PayPal, on their business account section, however, you can create an additional user for free. Some accounts will allow you to have a certain number of users, and then you'll have to pay more to add more users later. It all depends on the account, and it's worth investigating. When you have added a user, you will be able to not only grant or restrict access how you need to, you can easily remove access for them when you need to. You know, many of the software programs save data much of the time in the background so you can't see it outright, but it saves what the user ID did when. You know, it's the who, what, when, where questions that they answer. It's like a timestamp. If everyone you delegated to was using your admin access, then you would have no idea who did what. Sharing access for your Facebook business page is super nice because all you have to do is add the person to fill the role as admin, editor, or, you know, there's a few other roles too. Just depends on what they do. And it's right in the settings section of your page. There's no need to allow access to your personal profile. That's super cool. For other social accounts or even scheduling accounts like Buffer or Hootsuite, you may end up needing to share your admin login credentials. So fourth, let's talk about how should you send your login credentials. If your assistant is physically right by your side, well, then you simply tell them the information. But most of the time, when you need to share credentials to get the task done, it's to someone who is working remotely. The easiest way to share is simply to email the information. For some folks, it, the quickest is to send it through Facebook private message. Or maybe texting information works for you. Don't be too quick to share information this way. It's not recommended at all, but it's done all the time. You don't want to share your username and password information this way because what if that information is intercepted by someone who shouldn't have it? The information sent in text and emails and social media private messages are in plain text and not encrypted. Encryption makes things harder to access. The little extra effort to not use plain text methods in sharing your credential information. 
you may need to just call the person and let them know. But the very, very best way to share passwords is to implement a password manager system. There are many systems out there, and perhaps the top ones may be 1Password, KeyPass, Dashlane, and LastPass. Password management systems will help you keep your passwords organized. Your information is encrypted, and they will help you create more secure passwords even. They can evaluate if your password that you've created yourself is secure or not. If it's a weak one, you may want to rethink and change it. Or better yet, let the password manager randomly create one for you. What's very cool is that you can share the login credentials and the person you are sharing to will never have to know what the password is. I implemented using LastPass at Scrivener Solutions and all the team members have an account. I purchased enough user licenses for everyone on the team so I have the admin access and then all the team members have user access. I can pick and choose who I want to have access to what accounts. When I share the passwords, I can choose whether I want my staff to see the password or not. And usually, I see no need for them to even have to view what the password is. Now, how to share in LastPass is that I bring up the account that I want to share. It's in a folder. I click on the share button and enter the email of the person I want to share with and they're on my team and they get an email to accept the invitation and presto they have access and without even knowing what your password is they can still access the program. I'm able to add secure notes that I may feel need to be encrypted and there's a section to have a secure place to help with auto-filling forms. I'll be honest with you, not all of our clients use a password management system. They may send us login credentials by less secure means. And that worries me. So I want to serve them very well and protect their data that they've entrusted to us. So I load them into our LastPass system so that they are secure. Then I do my due diligence in deleting what they had sent me. I like LastPass and find it one of my most valuable tools in my company. It is reasonably priced and should be a no-brainer to implement for yourself, or at least a system like it. You will be more organized and you'll be all set to securely share passwords when it's time to delegate. Now, I highly recommend LastPass. Just review the show notes and you'll find a link so you can try it out. I'll tell you that it is an affiliate link and I wouldn't recommend it if I wasn't personally using it and liking the program. If you use the link that you find on my website and then you buy, I do get a little commission. But regardless of whether you use the link or not, it's worth a try. Maybe it would be the right tool for you. Now the fifth question you need to be asking yourself is, what will you do if your assistant leaves? If you have turnover, because you will have turnover, you should have a plan to what you need to do with all those passwords that you've shared. If you use a program like LastPass, then it's easy to revoke access. Most likely you haven't shared the option to view the password with your assistant, so revoking access would be super easy. If you've created a separate user ID for directly into a particular program that you use, maybe like MailChimp or even PayPal, then you'll need to make sure to remove them there too. If you don't use a password management system at all and you've parted ways with an assistant, then really and truly the best practice that you need to do would be to change all of your passwords that you've shared with them. Now, you may have parted ways in, on very good terms, but that person is no longer a part of your company and no longer doing projects for you, so they no longer need access. Even though you have complete trust in them, 
it's still a good idea to change the passwords that they were assigned and no longer needed. It protects you and them. Now, in summary, asking these five questions to yourself. Number one, what is it that you want your assistant to do? Number two, what kind of account are you sharing? Number three, can a separate user credential be created? Number four, how should you send login credentials? And number five, what will you do if your assistant leaves? All these questions help you draft your own password policy to help you be more aware and careful when sharing your passwords. It's just a matter of getting more done. You'll need to share a password or two sometime down the line. It's best if you're prepared and don't share haphazardly. Some of this stuff that I've gone over, like using systems like LastPass, overwhelms some people. And that's okay. That's okay if it overwhelms you. You don't have to be techy to implement good systems. What you do need is the support, training, and ideas to learn and manage all these different systems so that you can truly grow your business. The place for that is the Accomplish More Academy. Enrollment is now open. If you are a business of you, yourself, and, well, you, a solopreneur, or maybe just getting started and you're trying to get a handle on everything you must do to grow your business and use online methods to scale, then please go over to accomplishmoreacademy.com and sign up for membership. Being a new entrepreneur can be lonely. Being a solopreneur is really lonely, and it doesn't have to be. You don't have to be an island. You need others to learn from and to talk to others about challenges and wins in your business. You need a place to cut to the chase and just get the information you need to set up systems yourself, like maybe your Facebook business page, your social media campaigns, email campaigns, CRMs, whatever. Getting systems in place where you can do them easily, save time, and grow your business so that you can easily delegate if and when you are ready. If you have more questions about the Academy, I encourage you to simply email me at support at accomplishmoreacademy.com. If you're ready to get started, then go to accomplishmoreacademy.com and sign up today. I am so glad you joined me today, and thanks for listening. And until next time, have a fantastic week.